we haven't talked about the results yet, actually. So. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a minor detail. That's minor funny. detail. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, could, could could you talk about what the results were? Um, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So. Um, we, you know, just talking about the standard blood biomarkers that we got, um, which, by the way, thank God, Ryan Bradley, my co-PI, really pushed me to add those standard biomarkers. I was absolutely just committed to wanting to look at epigenetic changes, Um you know, just, I'm, you know, again, being a, a, a new scientist, now I, I absolutely appreciate, you know, casting a broad net with biomarkers. So if we start there, um, reminding folks that these are healthy, healthy, healthy men, and you can look at their um, uh, details, you know, the background details and our requirements for, for participation in the study. So these guys are healthy. You know, we're not seeing any evidence of diabetes or prediabetes, et cetera. Um, or, you know, methylation irregularities and so forth. So we, when we, we did a standard metabolic pattern or panel and we didn't see changes in A1C and fasting blood sugar. Um, we didn't see changes in homocysteine, et cetera. We looked at s methionine and s homocysteine and so forth. Um, and we didn't see remarkable changes there, uh, which is not surprising because they are, you know, we're basically a healthy cohort. Um, we did see triglycerides lower and significantly, like by 25% in our population. And I think this is evidence that they were adhering to the diet structure. Um, so they're, they're, they're probably moving into a little bit of ketosis and this makes sense. Um, and associated with that would be, you know, in our, our study population, a lower total cholesterol and a lower LDL. Mm. We saw a significant increase in methylfolate circulation. So we, which is, which is fabulous. You know, we wanted to see improved, you know, methyl donor status. And we did indeed, indeed see that. Um, biological age um, as compared to our control was, um, you know, reversed by 3.23 years. And when we look at our within group comparison, you know, again, this is 18, 18 men. So it's a, it's a pilot study. There was a reversal of uh, 1.96 years with a, a P value just um, above significance, but a real strong trend towards significance. So we were quite happy with those results. Right. That, and thinking about it, since these are healthy people, it's actually kind of harder to get them to, to improve their methylation than That's if they, exactly were, right. they were That's right. sick. I mean, well, not sick, but yep. uh, unhealthy. No, you're, abso you're absolutely right. Yes, chronic disease of, in, of aging are pro-aging. Like we know them to be pro-aging. And um, so they're, they're older. And therefore, if you restore them to balance... Yeah, you're going to shave more years off. And that's been shown for sure. Right. Interesting. Using, I will say it's been shown using different markers, like using metabolic, like a metabolic bio, biological age, like certain, like Nathan Price and, and, and um, Lee Hood um, have shown that in their publications. Right. So, so I had some kind of wrap up questions about the, the study. So what did you learn from, it sounds like you learned a lot, so, but what, what did yeah. you learn from the study? Um, yeah, and what do you think people should take away? That, that was kind of the other thing. Um, could, I mean, could we follow this protocol? Uh, we kind of talked about that already, but. We learned, yeah, we did indeed learn a lot. I think the power, uh, I think, I mean, I've always been aware of the power of food. Obviously, it's a cornerstone of, of what we do in our in our medical practice. Um, I think the you know think food as information, food as packets of information that can drive profound change, um, was suggested with this study. Um, the combination. So we know in our study that we didn't sort of have a net gain in methylation in our participant group, but we rearranged methylation on the DNA, you know, on the, on, on, on DNA, on DNA in a favorable pattern. Um, a, a, we, we, you know, used the, the DNA methylation patterns um, and our participants. And that suggests to me that 
this combination of methyl donor diet and intense methyl donor diet plus these, you know, these traffic directing polyphenols, these polyphenols we know are important players across the board. I mean, you know, the resveratrol, quercetin, um, you know, uh, green tea and so on and so forth. I mean, curcumin, they all, these guys have beautiful track records and they've been used time immemorial in, in, in diet and in, and in medicine. Um, And they have their epigenetically active compounds and maybe this is where they exert their heavy lifting uh so so you know traditional diets have i think you could look at most traditional diets and see that they're rich in these polyphenolic compounds and these methyl donor foods i mean we can see this uh i think across um the spectrum uh, so that to me is very exciting. And I also think the data suggests that combinatorial, like using multiple polyphenols, um, may exert uh, better influence. And I know a lot of folks have asked me and a lot of scientists really want to see which in, which one intervention or maybe two interventions is going to, you know, of isolated compounds is really going to knock it out of the park. And I'm curious about those investigations as well. I mean, I think that there's a place for them, but ultimately, you know, you, we would be remiss to uh, avoid this very obvious area that we can address and exert a potent influence. So, I mean, that was a huge and exciting take home. And the fact that, you know, we can influence DNA methylation favorably without using DNA methylation interventions. For you guys in the longevity world, that's, that's sort of obvious. You know, for us in functional and integrative medicine, for us to influence methylation, you need methylation donors. You need B vitamins, you need betaine, et cetera. You need choline. Um, but our study suggests and other science suggests that exercise can influence it, that sleep can influence it and so on and so forth. So just really going upstream and, 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 you know, looking at all the counterparts that can favorably influence it was, you know, kind of an aha for, for us. Right. So, so while you were, there was one question in that. So you, when you were talking about the, the traffic cops, I forget, I forget the, the name you mentioned for them. Uh, you, you talked about resveratrol and quercetin, and, but these are kind of the compounds. So what would you eat to get them? Mm, yeah, so we've, I've created a massive appendix of how to get the polyphenols that have evidence uh, behind them as being right. um, epigenetically active. Um, you know, obviously for resveratrol, you're going to be doing, um, you know, certain sources of grapes and, you know, curcumin obviously is going to be turmeric. I mean, there's, there's a, there's a, a number of different foods we can look at. Actually, there's many, many, many different foods that we can look at of varying degrees of concentration, um, to get these methylation, we call them methylation adaptogens or, you know, these polyphenol compounds. Yeah. Right. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.